Hi folks, it's Darren for Well From uh, Init6 here with well, uh, a, a kind of short message today, hopefully. Um, really, just to give you a feel for my experiences of taking the DevNet Associate exam. Now, I took that exam this morning. Um, I'll admit it was for the second time. Um, failed it first time very narrowly, um, but today, thankfully, um, the yeah, we're in November 2020 now, and uh, yeah, th thankfully, I managed to pass the exam. And you know, the, it's been really interesting. I when I, after I passed and put my score report up on uh, on the socials, the feedback that I've got from people about the fact that it, was it tougher than they expected it to be has really sort of struck a chord with me. I really. Uh, I had to do a whole load more study than I thought I would do when I first took it up. I'd done a bit of programmability, I'd worked with APIs, new Python. I thought, you know, I was in, I thought it was in a really good place. But it's amazing just how much more that you need to consider, especially as a network engineer coming to, to that particular um, certification. Because the key point for me is that this isn't a cert. Well, it's not a networking cert, okay? It's not a CCNA, it's not a CCMP, it's not that style of certification. This isn't about certifying a network engineer to perform a particular bunch of tasks and, and certainly not to do network automation. As we know, the whole point of the DevNet certification program was about creating network-focused development people. Um, that was always the plan. Um, it was a whole, you know, 80% um, development, 20% of networking, as opposed to the CCNA and, and that those um, certs being 80% networking with a 20% um, automation in there. So really important to understand the difference. And I think this is where, uh, certainly from the, the messages I've had today, where people, are, it's really struck a chord with people because... Um, Go into that that exam thinking it's it's the same as every other networking cert that you've ever done. You are you are not going to do as well as you think. That's really really important. As far as the actual study process is concerned, you, you cannot do better than to get hold of um, Nick Russo's uh, study plan. It's all there. There's a YouTube video where he talks it through. There's a there's a, an Excel spreadsheet with all the materials that he suggests to use. And to be perfectly honest, you cannot go wrong with that. Um, also, the uh, the CC the Cisco Press uh, study guide, um, official study guide, fantastic. Covers um, everything top to bottom in the syllabus. Um, really knowledgeable guys writing this. You cannot go wrong with this book. Um, we uh, sent some of these out actually as a giveaway um, earlier in the year to um, to some uh, some winners of our co of one of our competitions. We'll be doing the same shortly for uh, another couple of copies of this. Uh, hopefully in the next next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, bear with us on that. But as I say, all the materials there, everything's there. But it's really key to make sure that you cover all, the, especially as a network, and go all the stuff that's outside your wheelhouse, right? So, so think about um, software development process. Think about CI/CD. You've got to know agile. You've got to know these things in order to really make an impression on this. Learn Git, but don't just learn it. Use it. Learn Docker, but use it. Actually build stuff with it and, and make sure that you understand why things work the way they do. Um, if you haven't done any Python yet, well, if you want to get somewhere with this, this um, uh, exam, you are going to have to learn Python. Um, it really gives you a, a foundation for the whole thing. I can't I can't overstate it. I mean as as a as someone who believes in network automation, someone who who you know hell it's in my job title now. It's it's so important to understand how programmability impacts your network going forward. It's only part of the story, but it's a really important part and and Python 
gives you that opportunity because it's understandable, because of it's extensible, because it's the support is so widespread. It gives you the right foundation in order to build all this the, the stuff that's in this exam in particular. Okay, there's information here about how you structure programming information here about how you use APIs and, and, and that stuff is really key because if you can use um, Python and you can use uh, functions in Python, you can build functions in Python, you can write code, then you can use APIs to both fetch information and then handle that information once you've got it. And that is probably the key thrust from a network perspective of what this... this um, this ex exam process, this certification process, is trying to achieve. So really, really important that you uh, that you understand those. Um, there's there's a couple of other things I'd suggest without breaking um, NDA. Um, I'd, I'd suggest that you um, when you when you're approaching the APIs for the different. Cisco platforms, you will find things in there that you don't know about in Cisco. There was stuff in there I sort of touched on. There were other things I didn't have the faintest clue about. But what you need to be able to do is understand how you interact with those systems. So what they do and how you interact with them. And the best approach I found for that was something I picked up when I did the, the CCDE, actually, was building a support matrix in your own terms of, right, I have a technology, I need to understand how we interact with that technology um, and, and stepping through the categories and working out, okay, this type of authentication, um, this is the information I need in the headers, this is the information I need in the, uh, in the body of the request, these are the parameters that I put on the URL and so on and build out um, a table effectively of each different platform and how you use the, the APIs to interact with it. Um, really key that you don't just go looking for someone else who's done that already. You do it yourself, learn it yourself. That's the way that you will get to the bottom of it and understand it best. So really, really important. Um, other than that, use the stuff as much as you can. I know it's hard to, to get a, a lab up and running, but you've got the DevNet sandboxes. You've got all the lab environments on the DevNet website, um, just um, go ahead, use those the opportunities that those things present you because they will basically make all of the difference once you've been able to actually put the things in into practice that you've learned on paper, you'll be away. Um, and it's a real eye-opener. I mean, it really gives you... It opens a door to so much understanding and so much uh, of a broader view of what's possible. Um, in my mind, network automation isn't just about being able to do things faster and more accurately and, and more scalably, but about being able to incorporate um, these, these processes in a bigger operational process so that you're able to give a better service in reality what you're trying to do here is is you're trying to say well actually i've got all this information um i want to make sure that that if a user wants to be able to use a service or build a new service or create a new service they can do as much as they possibly can by themselves self-service or or whatever using the systems that they're familiar with and then you can build interactions between those systems, things like your ticketing systems, your service nows or whatever. You can build those interactions through scripting, through APIs into um, the network directly or into automation platforms like your Ansible's and, and what have you. So it's really, really key that you think of automation as being a part of a broader uh, sort of automated operations ecosystem in reality that's that's for me that's what this really does this opens your eyes to see that you've got access to to a whole different world once you've uh, got through this and it just makes you think in a different way this is what I loved about the whole process it's it's about changing your mindset don't think like a a, a network analyst think like um, an, a network operations 
uh, engineer, someone who's who's looking at the bigger picture. Um, think about what you can automate, but think about why you would want to automate it as well, and you'll you'll go far with this. So anyway, I just wanted to make a quick um, quick video, just really just to to give you some some sort of instant feedback, if you like, on on the process. It's an awesome thing to do. It's a little bit tougher than you'd expect it to be. No tougher than than you know a, a typical uh, Cisco exams. The the format will be familiar when you actually sit down to do the exam. I mean, I did 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 it at home to the Pearson View um, without having to go to the Pearson View Test Center. I did it online. Um, it's exactly the same process as you you would be used to. Um, just you know, there's some some different mindset required in order to to get there. So I hope that's of use to it to you. Um, you know where to get hold of of me um, through my Twitter handle at Darren Fullwell uh, on LinkedIn, uh, the team um, at NX6 underscore Network, um, and and on the YouTube channel. You, you know where we are. So uh, please get in touch and give us some feedback. Really interested to hear what you've got to say. And uh, I know the rest of the team are well. We're almost all there now. We're, we're on our way to all getting through this uh, DevNet Associate. Hopefully all be in the class of 2020, as will you, hopefully. So if you're in the process of doing the study, please um, crack on. You're doing a fantastic job. Cannot wait. Best of luck. And uh, yeah, hopefully speak to you soon.